Hello, my name is Manuel Orta Ribeiro, and today I will present our work on whether anti-feminist communities are gateways to the far right. This is joint work with Robin Mamie and Robert West, and was done as a part of Robin's Masters at T-Lab. Also, as a warning, this presentation contains slur misogynistic terms. So, incels are a group of young men united by strong feelings of rejection and rage towards women. They abide by the so-called black pill, the idea that ugly, genetically inferior men have no chance of getting laid, as women are assumed to choose based on looks rather than personality or effort. And here I'm quoting incels.wiki, a wiki project maintained by the community. In practice, this nihilistic worldview is translated into online misogyny. For example, in this excerpt of an incel forum discussion, a user posts a video of a woman talking about her experience living with generalized anxiety disorder and panic attacks. The discussion that followed ridiculed the video, which, unsurprisingly, had its comment section disabled. In the view of incels, it was impossible for women to experience anxiety disorder, because they would be living in tutorial mode, and the mere suggestion that they did was enough to trigger extremely toxic responses. The incel community, however, does not exist in a vacuum. It is situated among other groups, such as pickup artists, a community built around game, techniques and strategies that would allegedly help men pick up women, men's right activists who avidly advocate against feminism and argue that society is rigged not against women, but against men, and men going their own way, or MGTOW, who also believe that society is rigged against men, but go an extra mile to advocate abstaining from relationships with women. These communities have been collectively referred to as the Manosphere, web-based anti-feminist movements that roughly focus on men's issues. Recent work by myself and others has suggested that these anti-feminist communities are rapidly evolving, with mother and older communities such as pickup artists and men's rights activists giving way to more extreme ones, like incels and men going their own way. Amidst this, a chief concern that emerges from experts and the media is the link between these anti-feminist communities and the far right more broadly. In this paper, we test this hypothesis looking at data from Reddit and YouTube. We look at comments mostly. So, we leverage over 300,000 uh, 300, comments, 300 million comments across 115 subreddits uh, and 526 channels. These are extracted from the Manosphere, the Alt-Right, and from carefully chosen counterparts, sets of channels uh, and subreddits for comparison. For YouTube, we use an eclectic uh, set of media channels as counterparts, while for Reddit, we use, a randomly sampled, we use randomly sampled comments and a list of gaming subreddits, which, uh, and, and then which specific counterpart is chosen for Reddit depends on the analysis. For, the de for details on how we sampled and annotated the channels, and for how we chose and used the counterparts, please refer to the paper. Okay, so we begin inspecting similarities in the commenting user bases of these two communities, uh, the Manosphere and the Alt-Right. And for that, we use two metrics related to set similarity. Given the set of users that commented in the Manosphere, we're calling here A, uh, or the Alt-Right, that here we're calling B, in a given year, we can estimate how similar these sets of users are with metrics such as the Jacquard coefficient and the overlap, right? So recall that the Jacquard coefficient is defined as the size of the intersection between these two sets divided by the size of the union, where the overlap is defined uh, as the size of the intersection divided by the size of the smallest of the communities. And note that the overlap is particularly convenient to compare smaller communities with bigger ones, since a smaller community can be entirely contained in a larger one and still have a low Jacquard coefficient because it is so small. So, in this plot, uh, we show these two metrics uh, comparing all communities within the Manosphere with the Alt-Right for both YouTube on the top plot and Reddit on the bottom plot. We calculate the metrics for each year between 2008 and 2018. And we show the Jacquard similarity as a green line and the overlap coefficient in the background color of the image, which I'm about to show you, right? And in purple, we show the Jacquard similarity for the counterparts chosen for each platform. So these are the results. And in both YouTube and Reddit, we find that the overlap between the Manosphere and the Alt-Right 
uh, is, is more expressive. Uh, sorry, the jacquard similarity between the manosphere and the alt-right is more expressive than the counterparts. Also, more, more recently, we observed that the jacquard similarity and the overlap have been growing on YouTube. Uh, we, we can also look at specific communities within the manosphere. And what we find out when we, we do that is that the effect is heterogeneous for, different, for, for the different communities. So in this plot, for example, we compare uh, the similarity between the MGTOW community with the alt-right on YouTube on the top image and the incel community with the alt-right on YouTube uh, on the bottom image. While the MGTOW community is more similar to the alt-right and the counterpart and then the manosphere in general, the incel community is less similar to the alt-right and the counterpart. So not all communities are created equal here. Okay, so while interesting, this is still insufficient evidence towards the pipeline hypothesis you're discussing, right? Because it could be that uh, all these shared users are new users that simultaneously join the alt-right and the manosphere. To see if there is a pipeline, we must go one step further. We must see if users who are in the out right now were previously exclusively active in the manosphere. And this is exactly what we do in the next set of analysis. We do as follows. We get users who were active in other communities, but not in the out right, let's say in 2016. And then we track how many of these users from those who are still active went on to comment in the out right uh, in 2017 and 2018. Here, we did this analysis in 2016 but we can choose other starting times. In practice, we divided the study period into five bins and ran the analysis starting in each of the different bins, except the last one. In this plot, we show the percentage of users that went on to comment in outright content for different starting periods, each of, which, each of which is a different plot. For example, in the first plot, we consider users who posted in the manosphere between 2006 and 2012 and did not post in the outright subreddits then. We then analyze what percentage of these users have remained active in the platform, that remained active in the platform, went on to comment in outright subreddits at least once in the subsequent years. We show the results for YouTube in red and Reddit in blue. And again, we compare uh, our results with carefully chosen counterparts. We find that consistently across different starting dates, users that engaged with the Manosphere in a given year, exclusively with the Manosphere, not with the outright in that sense, uh, are significantly more likely to engage in outright subreddits uh, in, in subsequent years than users who, who engaged exclusively with the counterparts in a given year. For example, for users who uh, in 2017 engaged exclusively with Manosphere related content, around 17% of those uh, who have remained active went on to engage with outright subreddits in the next year, in 2018. This can be seen in the last plot. And it's, it's more than, than double the, the amount of users that, uh, in the count that started that in 2017 engaged with the counterpart and then that went on to engage with the outright. And, and here again, we find that effects are heterogeneous when comparing different communities within the manosphere. Uh, and there are significant differences between the different communities. And here you might ask, so what? And I'll do my best to convince you that these finds matter. First of all, we provide quanti quantitative evidence for the link between anti-feminist communities and the far right. This had been previously hypothesized many times, and we hope that the concrete results provided may be helpful for platform policies and moderation decisions. Second, our work suggests that communities within the manosphere are heterogeneously linked in, uh, to the alt-right. Despite all the media coverage associated incels to the far right, for instance, we found that other communities such as men going their own way and men's right activists are much more closely related. In that sense, our research suggests that stakeholders should also investigate the influence of these less studied communities on our online information ecosystem. Third and last, we stress that the, we observed results in two different platforms. This not only strengthens our findings, but also suggests that radicalization can happen in very different places. Much has been said about the role of the recommenders of recommender systems in radicalizing individuals. Yet, here we find that in Reddit, a platform guided by a simple thumbs up algorithm, the effects were also observed. This suggests that online radicalization can happen regardless of algorithmic recommendations.
Thanks for your attention.